Lee. So let's get the ball rolling and start off with the conversations. I never do it alone. And this time I do it with the man who is from the west of Africa. You find him within South Africa, but worry not. He's got all the documents that he needs. <laughs> One thing he doesn't have, though, was a coaching license. But he gets to sit in this honorable chair. Adelane? Yes, yes. Great yes, to yes. do this with oh, you. Yeah, great to do this with you. I'm just so glad I have my papers in order. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing so. Let's start off with the trivia question. Now, this week, we want to know about the great Isa Hayatu. I want to know from you, who was his successor between the years 2017 and 2021? Do you want to guess? Can I give them a hint? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yes, a Malagasy man whose first name and last name is the same. Well, that gives it all away. Send through your answers. Use the hashtag, the only one that matters. It's hashtag foot Afrique. Talking about Isa Hayatu, unfortunately, after a battle with the disease for a long time, he passed away last week, Thursday. And this was out in Paris. But he is a man who we truly will remember. Almost three decades. Three decades. That is insane. Yes. And when he started, in fact, we can actually give him the extra year. Come on. I think we can give him, I know it's 29 years, but like, let's just round it off. Yeah, listen, he passed away just a day short from his 78th birthday. Yeah. And listen, he's a hero for Cameroonian football. When mm. he came into power, he came in in 1988 in Morocco. It was a double win for Cameroon that year because it was the same year that Cameroon won the Nations Cup, yeah. beat Nigeria in 1988. And... Yes, everybody was happy with what they did in Morocco, mm. but very few people understand how much of a legend this guy is. Yeah. Now, before him, there were eight teams in the African Nations Cup. It was very mini. It wasn't a big spectacle yes. and extravaganza of what yes. we know and, today. And, and he wasn't a big fan of a 24-team tournament. Yeah. It went from eight to 12 to 16. Also, just the competitions is introduced. Mm. He's introduced uh, the WAFCON. Yeah. That came from him. He introduced the under-23, the under-17 Nations Cups. He introduced the Chan Tournament. Mm. And I think he was also very instrumental in just making sure that there were more slots for African teams in the World Cup. Absolutely. And also the 2010 FIFA World Cup. Coming to South big. Africa. I enjoyed every <laughs> bit of that World Cup, from Shakira's song to uh, Desmond Tutu's iconic speech to yeah. the actual football on the pitch. Yeah. And I think this man just deserves all his flowers. Yeah. We saw October 2015, when he came into power, mm -hmm. there was a big party in Yaoundé, and that was a place where they gave him all his flowers. And when uh, the next president, who I wouldn't mention his name, yes, because I'll be yes. giving off, uh, <laughs> you know, our trivia question answer. When he came into power, he just, he, he wanted to punish Isa Ayatu. Mm. He actually said that he, he took the case to the court of arbitration and he didn't want him to attend any Nations Cup game mm. in Cameroon because for ethical reasons. Mm. Now, the people of Cameroon were waiting for them to actually do that to Isa, to actually kick him out of the games because yeah. he actually attended. And um, nothing happened. The people love him. Yes, he had his controversy. We know he was banned for one year. Yeah from FIFA due to a breach of, of, of loyalty. Yeah. Uh, that was from a commercial. Uh, that he had signed off. Yeah, yes. Yeah. That, was, that was a participation um, that he actually didn't honor with a, a media agency in France. Mm. And yes, there was that controversy. They charged him 33,000 US dollars, but what is we, that? We can't, we can't take anything <laughs> yeah. away from this man. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. One thing that I love about him also was the fact that you just talk about what he's done and the influence that he's had on African football. And I look at Dr. Patrice Mutsipe now, and I'm looking at the fact that he introduced the AFL, and there's so many other things that he's introducing into African football. Mm -hmm. So it literally, it's like every president who sits in that hot seat wants to make a change, wants to introduce things that will better the game. We know that we're currently on the journey of one to make African football better, better, but you, also you, making you, you it. You know, when Isa came into uh, CAF, yeah, they were worth one billion and then? US dollars. They had one billion US dollars when he left, according to reports, allegedly. Yeah. 
25 billion US dollars. Take us to the top, Petris Mazipa. Take us to the top. Well, may Isa Hayatu rest in peace, love and peace to his family and friends. As I said, the Atlas Lions out in Paris went and roared and dominated. They got themselves onto the podium, something that not everyone saw coming. It's a plot twist. You know, I had this funny dream that France and Spain were stripped of their medals. Why? Because most of their players tested positive <laughs> and then Morocco and Egypt won the, yeah. the gold and the silver. <laughs> no, man, quickly, because we have to go to a break. Let <laughs> me know, what is it that Morocco did well within this competition that really got them standing on that podium? Listen, Morocco played out of their skin for me. It's mm. just the sheer desire. And we spoke about it last week. They had players that just did the right things, mm. you know, at the right time in terms of they had standout performers Absolutely. in their ranks. And now, do you know how nice it is for the people of Morocco to beat their rivals 6-0? Yeah, yeah. Just think about... That is a demolition. Like, yes, it's like Bafana beating Zimbabwe 6-0. <laughs> Imagine Nigeria beating Ghana 6-0, <laughs> the feeling. Yeah. So Morocco did it in style. And even Issa Ayato, where, wherever he is, he will be smiling at what we achieved at the Olympics. Yeah, well, congratulations to the Atlas Lions. They surely are dominating the North. I do say that Morocco is the mecca of football lovers. And each and every time they participate within a competition, they've proven me extra right. Go nowhere, because the conversations do continue after this.